Our next guest just mentioned he needed a haircut in that commercial you saw for Harvard Eye Associates. We're welcoming Dr. T to the program. Dr. T, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me again. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, Harvard Eye Associates. You guys have been around for 45 years, kind of general and specialty services for the eye. Yeah, we're a large multi subspecialty eye care group with ophthalmologists, optometrists, really able to provide a wide range of eye care for you. So we like to be sort of a one stop shop. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk a little bit about glaucoma, but with cataracts, how, do, how does, what, what are some of the symptoms of glaucoma in the first place? If somebody thinks, hey, I might be having some vision issues. Yeah, so glaucoma is what we call the silent thief of vision. You actually don't notice it, and that's the issue. Eye pressures go up, it causes damage to the back part of your eye, until there's enough damage where you're noticing you're not seeing well. Okay. Unfortunately, by that point, when you come in to come see us, we're like, oh, there's already damage. Can't undo it, the goal is to minimize it. That's why it's super important to get routine eye care done. And what would that look like? Am I going to something it's going to get hazy for me, or I'm just having trouble focusing? If I'm if the, the glaucoma symptoms, everyone's going to be a little bit different. Most people would say, "Hey, I'm just not seeing quite as well," mm -hmm. and we're trying to figure out where it's coming from. Okay, okay. So cataract surgery for cataracts, mm -hmm. and how does it apply to glaucoma? That's a great question, and that's so confusing to patients right. when I bring it up with them because we're focusing it on their glaucoma care. They're like, why are we talking about cataracts? I thought they're separate issue. Mm -hmm. And they are separate issues, but they're connected together. Mm -hmm. The reason why that is, is the natural lens of your eye, which is almost like a camera, gives your eye strength. As we get older, as we mature, it becomes cloudier. Mm -hmm. The problem is the lens of your eye, much like everything in this room, there's only so much space in it. It takes up more and more space as it's getting bigger and bigger. It does one fundamental thing. It pushes the drainage system of your eye closed. Well, the problem with that is when the drainage system closes, that fluid that you're naturally creating inside of your eye accumulates. Mm -hmm. That causes your pressure to go up. Okay. And that stresses other sections of your eye, including the optic nerve, and damages it over time. And that's what glaucoma is, and that's how they're related together. Okay. And so what, what does the procedure do exactly in terms of relieving that pressure? So what happens here in cataract surgery, you take that big bulky lens out that's gotten big, you replace it with a small wafer of a new lens mm -hmm. that actually opens up space in your eye. That drainage system that was getting smaller and smaller all of a sudden has more space to open up. Okay. That's when the pressure goes down, and that's one way of helping glaucoma. Because the way we take care of glaucoma is simply to bring the eye pressure down. Mm -hmm. There's many options. There's eye drops, lasers, surgery, or injections. The first surgical intervention is actually just cataract surgery. Mm, okay. And are there pills or there supplements you take after that? Maybe like in terms of, is it a blood pressure thing? That if I have a high blood pressure, I'm a candidate for glaucoma? Great question. Blood pressure, eye pressure, two separate compartments. Okay. They're generally not related. Actually, for some people, low blood pressure is more associated with glaucoma than high blood pressure. There are some pills you can take for glaucoma, but we generally don't like those pills because they can cause other effects in the body. So the general treatment algorithm we use is eye drops, lasers, surgeries, and injections. Okay. Yeah. So you get the surgery, you get the, the new lens in there. Um, is that kind of the cure in terms of the, we're not going to have that pressure issue anymore, or will that eventually kind of the pressure build up again, or how does that, is it is a permanent yeah. solution? I think that's a great question. As much as I would love to say it's a cure, there's never a way of <laughs> curing glaucoma. Okay. The question is just treating it and keeping the eye pressure down. Okay. For most patients, it does help out. One of the cool things happening here is there's a shift in the way we think about glaucoma care to more of an interventional mindset. So when we're doing cataract surgery, not only does that help bring the pressure down, but there's these newer technologies that have come out that we can do at the same time as we're doing cataract surgery, usually adding one or two additional steps to the procedure to further help the drainage system. So a lot like we were talking about that drainage system naturally opening up, well, if it opens up and it's still a little bit clogged, I'm gonna go there and just do a little rotor rooter in there too, okay. since I'm already working in the eye. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had a friend, I'm not gonna reveal his name, but he had cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. And he told me that he was offered different options of lenses according to what he, you know, what he could pay for was insurance coverage yeah. and then the, the, you know, kind of the optimal one that wasn't covered. Is that something you also do, that, that lens you put in there? Are, there? are there different options for, and how is someone going to see? Is it gonna be a lot different? from when they're the regular lens that was in there? Absolutely, there's many different options, so there's no cookie cutter way of doing cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. So I like to say, don't be overwhelmed with the options. Let your eye care provider guide you in them. It's mm -hmm. sort of like trying to pick toppings of a pizza, but you've never had pizza before. Mm -hmm. Now when it comes to glaucoma, some of the lens options are gonna be better than others because you wanna have an otherwise healthy seeing eye for some of the things that we can implant. For glaucoma, we may recommend other options. 
The goal is simply just trying to maximize your vision. That's why we think it's super important to get to know each other. So I realize what's an important activity for you so I can recommend the right lens to get you to where you need to be. Okay. So take us kind of through the procedure step by step. I come in, I'm a candidate, where do we go from here? Yeah. For cataract surgery, if we agree that that's what the primary issue is, it's super important to figure out that there's nothing else in the eye that's causing the visual issue. Because if we're gonna take the time and risks and benefits of doing surgery, we wanna make sure you do really well with it. So we'll do a thorough exam, get some testing done, and if that's what it is, we then typically get you connected to our surgical counselor. We get some special measurements done of your eyes. Then we get your surgery scheduled. And in surgery, we go in there, as we mentioned, take that cloudy lens out, put a new lens in. And the way I think about that cloudy lens is think of it like an M&M in your eye. I love food analogies, by the way. <laughs> now, the M&M has got this outer shell. That's what the cataract is. The milky stuff we take out, we take that thin wafer of a new lens. It goes back into the shell of the M&M. That's sort of what you see there on the diagram mm -hmm. in the back. Mm -hmm. yeah. The key is getting the measurements done because the power of the lens we put in varies person to person. It's kind of like picking shoe sizes. You may agree, oh, I want that hiking boot. Well, the next question is, what size do we need it in? Okay. And that's what the specific measurements are for. Okay. Yeah. What are some of the things people can do now to, make sh to, to help in the early stages? Should the regular eye checks, are, they gonna, are you gonna find that? Uh, hey, you might, be a, you might be a candidate for glaucoma down the line. Are you gonna notice that? Do you take eye pressure tests? Absolutely, so comprehensive eye exams, that's gonna be the most important thing. And again, we consider glaucoma the silent thief, as we talked mm -hmm. about earlier. Mm -hmm. You simply don't know that your pressure's creeping up until it causes damage. A lot of the time patients come in saying, gosh, you're telling me the pressure's high, but I don't feel it. And that's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. There are rare types of glaucoma where the pressure goes up very high, you're gonna feel that. Okay. But in majority of cases, you don't. And actually the worst thing that I can ever hear is when a patient comes in and saying, I already can't see well. That means we're already moderate or even severe glaucoma. Gosh, we want to catch this early on so you never notice it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So like your food analogy, regular meals are going to keep you from being hungry. <laughs> go and regular checkups are going to maybe catch something early on yes. and it won't be as severe as it could have been? Absolutely. It's all about maintaining a high quality of life, functional vision at mm -hmm. the end of your life. Mm -hmm. Earlier detection, earlier treatment, not only is it easier, but you end up doing much better at the end. Okay. What's the recovery time? I'm, I've had the surgery. I'm, I'm okay. Am I wearing special glasses for a long time? Am I, am I avoiding high impact activities for a while? I love those questions because what we want to do is get patients back to the way they're living their normal activities. We generally say about a week to recover. That doesn't mean you're not up and about. It just means your eyes healing from surgery. So mm -hmm. maybe a little bit blurry. Probably the biggest thing is no heavy lifting or straining. That, mm -hmm. that kind of maneuvers we don't really like, but otherwise it's a relatively quick recovery. So heavy lifting and straining because of the pressure that it puts on you, you, you know, that, oh, I'm lifting something and that actually can affect the eye? It can. Just imagine having knee surgery. You have a wound on the knee. They would say, well, don't exercise. We don't want the wound to open. <laughs> In cataract surgery for a majority of patients, we actually don't even use stitches to close the small incisions we make. So if you do that straining maneuver, you have a tendency of trying to open those incisions, and we don't like that. Okay, so I, I never think of in terms of my eyes being kind of strained if I'm doing exertion kind of things, but that, that definitely has an effect, you're yeah. saying. And that's one of the beauties with the newer technology with cataract surgery, our incisions are so small, usually about two millimeters in length, they don't require stitches, because the last thing you want to do is come in after surgery, and I have to remove stitches from your eye, but mm -hmm. we try to do it without it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So wh what kind of insurance? Is this, does insurance cover most of this? Is Majority of the time for cataract surgery, yes it is, because we want to make sure that it's affecting your vision, so there's several tests we do, mm -hmm. but we also want to check your pressure. So a majority of the time when we talk about cataract surgeries, it's functionally affecting your vision, mm -hmm. but when it comes to glaucoma patients, sometimes the first sign we see is your eye pressure going up. Mm -hmm. So patients may come in saying, you know, I'm not seeing I'm not noticing a big difference with my vision. You know, why, why are we dealing with cataracts? It was because it's actually causing a secondary effect. Your eye pressure is going up. Mm -hmm. Back to that analogy, if there's only so much space here in the room in your eye working, it's taking up more space. It's mm -hmm. causing other problems. Mm -hmm. And we want to catch it on. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, post, like you said, it's not, there's no cure, but what's the maintenance? What you said, there's, there, what kind of a follow-up in terms of, okay, here's how I keep my eyes, my glaucoma in check. Yeah, so routine maintenance care is the way to go. And the answer to that is it'll depend on how bad your glaucoma is. Mm -hmm. If your glaucoma is caught super early, usually about two times a year seeing you, just checking in, making sure the pressure has been elevated, that works for you. Mm -hmm. But the more advanced disease you have, the more you need to be seen, it's just like anything else. Right, just the, the regular follow-up care is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Well, you can get that at Harvard Eye Associates, right? Okay. Right, we can. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dr. T, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. When we come back, we're going to be talking to the old pros. Stay with us.